Thank you very much, Francis, for the introduction. And thank you very much, Adam and Francis, for the invitation to be here talking to you about this uh, subject of uh, reproducible research. In this morning, uh, I was invited to talk about how to organize, document, and share research data and codes using R, which is under the concept of research campaign. And uh, just a little bit about myself. I am a plant pathologist. I'm from Brazil. And I started to become more interested in this topic of reproducible research two, day, two years ago when I met uh, Adam Sparks. And we were discussing about how in our community of plant pathologists, we could help other people to embrace reproducible research practices like we both were doing some years ago. So we started to work on reproducible research very formally. And then we became more interested after we started to learn more about the tools that we have available now that can help us to, um, to work in, in a way that we can package everything and make available for other people to use. So we started to learn about the, a new workflow and new tools and new concepts that we both believed would be useful for our field. So we're both plant pathologists and we created this community called Open Plant Pathology and we invited some other colleagues and we are now trying to promote and to engage in the training and dissemination of these ideas of a reproducible research in plant pathology, but it's not limited to this field. It can be applied for any other field. So a little bit about the research cycle here. It's a very basic cycle, as everybody knows. We have an idea. We probably have some uh, classes, I think, about pre-registered pre-registering your idea, a proposal. Uh, there are some benefits when you do that. It's not so common in many fields, but in medicine and in human health, I think it's very, it's becoming more common now. We run experiments to prove some of our hypotheses. We collect data, we analyze this data, and we finally communicate the findings. By a tradition, we think of this entire cycle, we summarize this in a research scientific article. That's the main outcome of our research. Of how all these steps we follow during the research process is to produce an article, a scientific article. Okay? There's much more that we can do, and this involves an extra effort, and we need to make sure that it's worth this effort in organizing, documenting, sharing research data and codes. So it's not only about the scientific article, but about everything that we produce during the research process. Let's see here, it's more clear for everybody about this one of the umbrella of open science. We have this open access to research article, but we can do much more by adopting research practices in a way that we can uh, prepare, organize, document, and share data, protocols, and codes, and disseminate this information together with the scientific articles. That's our idea, is to disseminate this information. So is it important? Is it important to know, to ask ourselves why we are doing that? Why we should do that now? Why other people are doing that and how and it's about the sharing but there's a lot of things that we need to know about and how to get there how to prepare all these other um, accessory or some other outcomes of your research process that can accompany your research on. the open access is clear for everybody it's about accessibility you make things, your research accessible so other people can learn, we produce knowledge. 
But by sharing you know, organized documentation sharing the data and protocols and codes, there is some other benefit that not only related with the accessibility. Let's say if we prepare and document, organize and document in a way that we ourselves can redo the analysis, we can work more efficiently. We document for ourselves, for our future selves. That's very important. In many ways, we get lost when we, for example, are running a kind of a statistical analysis. There are so many things we do, so many decisions during the process. We have so many lines of code, and it's easy to get lost among so many, so many, many decisions, decisions, so many functions. So documentation is not only for other people. It's very important that other people can understand what we have done in order to reproduce. So we enhance reproducibility by documentation. It's not only for others. So our work can be much more efficient if we can also document for ourselves. And the, tr the transparency aspect is also important because so many decisions we make by sharing the data, it's very clear if we if there is something that we exclude or omit some data, those decisions should be very clear for the reader, for the user, for the other person trying to reproduce and understand better our work. Reusability is clear. We want to make all the data available for other people to use. It's not only for ourselves, it was useful for that research, for the purpose of that research, but other people that work with data can benefit from uh, reusing the data for meta analysis, some other data. It's very, something very costly. It costs a lot of money to collect data. It's, it's very limited use of the data if we have this shared uh, or use it in a single paper. So not if advanced science is good as we accumulate this data and make the data available, but but if you make this very useful, we need documentation of the data too. So protocols, how we conduct our research is important, how we analyze the data is important. So documentation is really key, okay? At the end, we can increase reliability, reliability of the research findings if we can do everything. So ultimately, the ultimate goal is to produce a science degree, this, reliable. So if we separate uh, the data, the protocols and codes, we can opt to have this closed, it's not open. We have a, a way that can be, we can share this with other people. We can make available by submitting data sets and descriptors of the data set to these repositories that we have available now. And it's another outcome, it's an important outcome of your research, the data that you produce during the, this process. So scientific article, you have accompanying the data and the data itself, themselves, is also important as a product. And you can get a DOI from these other people can use and other people can cite and use. In terms of protocols, everything we do, the documentation, all the details of the research process is documented in a way that other people can follow and you, you can share this some platforms that we can use now that enables us to make this available for other people to use. You can opt to have this in your computer for yourself or you can share openly and have this also edited or you can get contributions from other people to improve these uh, your protocols. Um, in terms of code, it's another way we can have the code running in our machine. We can have just the code for ourselves, or we can share it with our advisors, some other colleagues, or we can use some collaborative platforms like GitHub, GitLab, GitBucket. And it's not only to make codes available for other people to use, but it's important if you want to promote help from other people, you can get help, the other people can help you to improve your code. I think that's, there's a lot of potential in this aspect that we 
I don't think we explore enough. We are basically, we mostly, most of the time we use those platforms to distribute or to share the code and not to work collaboratively. And then we have, mostly have these codes in those platforms, we can link those platforms with uh, some uh, general purpose repositories that can make this stored permanently, like OpenSign Framework, Zenodo, and some other platforms. And we can also get the POI out of those outcomes, the code, too, as the same we have for data. And in terms of communication of the findings, that can be closed or open. In science, there are so many uh, opportunities we have to share openly uh, preliminary findings, like abstracts when we attend meetings, there's the proceedings of the meeting, when we give a talk, it goes into public. But a talk can be shared openly if you deposit your talk in on some of these web platforms like Speaker Deck, you can make this open for other people. So during the research process, you start to open your findings and you're not, you're not saving only for the, for the publication. When you present a poster, it's public and you can opt to post the poster as a PDF in uh, OpenSign Framework, for example. You can prepare a preprint of your article and I think you had a, a talk about this, and in a way that has so many benefits from posting preprints, like for example, you make available for other people to criticize, make comments, and then you can improve it for the final publication. And you can, if you have the money, you can make your uh, paper open access. But if you opt to make it a free wall, paper, you can still have your preprint, which is the same content. So the benefits are early sharing and you can get comments uh, prior to the final paper and you can still update your preprint and get your information out for people who cannot get access to the other, the other uh, journals. So the challenge is to change. Okay? We are, we have been trained in this cultural thing that uh, we are prepared to write papers and we are, we are trained to do that. And that's a big challenge if you want to adopt a new culture. It's a, related with the, some cultural aspects, some pros and cons, some benefits and success, the key for success. It is important for us. Why should I change and learn new things? There is an effort, an extra effort, not only to produce a scientific art, but to produce, to document your data, to, to make it, to deposit your data somewhere, to produce a code, to document a code, to generate a research campaign. That takes time. And we need to make sure that we believe that that, that extra effort is really important for us. There, is, there are some benefits. So ideally, as a researcher, we would like to contribute more. And there is a trend of uh, making our research available and not only the scientific articles, but we want to embrace reproducible research practices. We need to first believe that that's really important. And that will uh, demand us to learn new things like new knowledge, new concepts, and technology. We need to learn how to use some other tools that we are not using to. And the good news here is that there is limited or nothing that you should invest in terms of money, just your time. And there's so many, in terms of technology, we have software, we need software, we need to learn use different environments, follow different workflows in the process. And we need to think that if we want to co collaboration and share with other people, that we need to use to learn to use some different platforms too. So that's uh, a lot of different uh, elements, different technology that we, we need to combine and learn, to come out with this. If there's not a single environment, there are so many tools. That's why we say that uh, we have R 
is uh, is on platform with the Qatar friends, the friends of our Indianapolis. So there's not many things that we can do, and there's so many tools as we saw here, but it's very easy to get lost among so many tools, and we as humans we tend to think that we should go with the maxim, maximize or uh, complicate things that should be more simple at first. So Domi has uh, created this uh, reproducible research level steps. If we can do like there are four levels here, so zero level would be on your article, the way most of the people are using. Not most of the people, I should say that many people are putting out supplementals as a uh, Together with the scientific article, but if you if you can do, you can prepare in your article, in your preprint, in a supplemental, with the codes and the protocols as a zip file. That's level one. That is the kind of level that I think most of the people are at, depending on the on the area, the scientific area. But in neurobiology, I think most of us are. It's culturally more common to this kind of uh, our outcome and we all we also have the submission uh, platforms for journals accepting and uh, stimulating us to produce this kind of content. Level two would be something like you have your article, you have a preprint, and you have you post your protocols, the data in the coding repositories and you can get a certification now. In level three which is the most advanced way of doing reproducible research, would be the article, the preprint, the research companion, where you document everything and you have this package or like a container that by itself allows other user or other researcher to reproduce entirely your, the analysis of your work. That's where we want to get in the future. But if you can do something like level one and two, it's excellent. Because there, there's a learning curve that you need to be aware of because it takes time to learn new tools and it takes time to incorporate a new culture. And it's very important that you keep up with the modification because it's, it's not easy, even, even for us, it will require it requires us more time and more patience to and a different uh, uh, I think patience is important and then to follow some strict protocols okay the research companion uh, idea uh, this is a very nice definition from the gentleman in 2004 and I had got this slide from Carthy uh, Graham, which is really nice concept, definition. So container is, is both a container for the different elements that make up the document. So it's a combination of the text, the code, and the data to be organized in a way that you can distribute, manage, like updating, and uh, you can make available for other people. This very nice icon too, I got from this website. Uh, we don't need to spend a lot of money to do that. So we have R to save us, to help us save the money. If we don't use R, we have alternatives. There are some other, some alternatives that we don't need to spend some money. If we, can, we are able to use some other programming languages like uh, Python uh, for doing data science. But most of the people I think are using Excel to wrangle the data, to manage the data, to produce plots. The analysis are done using proprietary software like Stata or SAS. Scientific plots, the leading software for producing plots, which is Sigma plot, and using text editor to produce the final match. Luckily, we have R to do everything in the same environment. We, by using R, we can organize projects and we can have some inputs of the data and some external files like uh, references 
bibliography data and some other data data that you can uh, organize and by using programming in R, using R Studio and some other a lot of different packages, we can produce a research company within R Studio. How to build uh, R Studio uh, research companion? There are two different kinds of uh, research companion. I classified in, in a project template. Uh, the idea here is that we have a structure. We structure the, the files that we have, uh, folders and subfolders, and then files and folders. Uh, within R Studio, we have a project template. We create this template. The creation can be manual or can be same automated or automated, and, or we can produce a research companion as an R package. There are some benefits and uh, some pros and cons when you use some of those so two different uh, structures of a uh, research companion. As an R package, the main benefit is that you can download the package and uh, all the functions and all the packages that are uh, used in that analysis are downloaded automatically. That's one of the benefits to use as an R package. As a project template, you, sometimes you need to install some packages. So that's the main difference when we compare a project template and an R package. And the idea when we use this project template, there are three different ways. Let's say you have the manual, do it yourself. You can open R Studio, and from within R Studio, you create a project. So you have a structure, you create files manually. That's possible too. The semi automated process would be to download the temp template and adapt that ready template for you to use. And then you can generate, you can run this uh, uh, the codes, some of the codes, because it's based on a template of a website, and you can generate a website, which is an interface for your research companion. And the third one is the, through all automation, is to create a, a template of a project using a workflow which is in our package that you install the package and there are some functions that allows you to create uh, this environment, this website automatically. So you can go from manual to semi-automated, you download your, or you clone a template, you modify this, this template and you generate your own research campaign website or you use it to get helps you to automatically create uh, a website, the interface for your research company. Both, all of them work. It's a matter of how you want to control yourself, your, your project. I started doing manually and I developed this research company website and then made this available for other people to use because I think it's, uh, it's easy. It, it also allows you to understand which files you, you need to change, and there's more about the learning process here. So, a little bit more about this project template. It's basically, as I was saying, that is uh, within our studio, we can see the structure. We have the RMD, R markdown files, we have the folders. Every time you download this, blank template, you adapt those files or you can create if you're able to learn more about these websites, creating websites in our markdown, you can do that. And this is an, an example of the interface, a website where you can navigate through the research campaign. So the main elements of this research campaign are the about, the data, so it's not the web page that explain your data, guides you through the analysis and all the decisions, like a tutorial of the analysis you've done. You got the results and somehow you can customize that. So once you understand this, you can start with the template and then you can build on top of that and make 
more complex uh, website for you. This article is very nice. It's by Ben Marwick. Ben Marwick, it's about using, creating research campaign as a, an art package. I recommend you to read this. And you can also have the option to manually create your research campaign as an art package. So we have a structure, and you define all the files, all the data files for the, the art package. You can create this through our, our studio, as I'm showing some windows here, or you can use something that all automate the process for you. So the automation is using an art package that allows you to create automatically and uh, research companion as a package. And there are our tools in the Ben Marwick's pack, a very nice package that does everything for you. It creates all the structure and all the files. And then you also need to work on the individual files and you build the package later on. So you can distribute your research companion in the package. This is some uh, this is a screen showing how the structure of the folder. Uh, you can see different folders and some subfolders separate for the data, for the scripts. So the main concept of the search campaign is that you need to separate everything as a specific location. There is a, a convention for the campaign. You separate the data, the scripts, the code, and all the functions and uh, the the text files and the data files, 